Inside the Birds is back. What's up, everybody? It's Jeff Mosher, Adam Kaplan here with another Inside the Birds. We're going to do a, a few things on this Inside the Birds. We're going to answer some Ask ITB questions. We've been inundated with tons of questions since the end of the draft. Um, so we'll go through that. Uh, we will get into a little bit of the, the roster. And then, of course, we'll talk a little bit about the front office that we've been kind of talking about for the last three or four weeks. Obviously, Andy Weidel's future um, is really the, the biggest question mark left for the Eagles front office. So we'll talk about that as well. Adam Kaplan, how are you? Did you have a good weekend? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad to be back home. I was in the Outer Banks. Uh, last nice. Week. The OBX. Yeah, nice. man. So got that done. The weather, other than a storm that came through. In fact, we, we just beat, I don't know if people, I know some people know about this, uh, probably half an hour away from where we were staying, some of the houses started falling into the water to the sea. I saw that. I didn't realize I was so close to you. Yeah, and in Rodanthe is uh, the, the movie, the Richard Gere movie, Yeah, uh, Nights in Rodanthe. I, we actually stayed two houses our first year in OBX in 2010. We stayed two houses away from that one. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, some of the houses in Rodanthe uh, went into the water, so that, that's obviously a concern. Mm -hmm. uh, that happened before we got there, though we weren't staying that close. But uh, no, the weather was great. Uh, and it, it's, it's just, uh, it's just a great place to go. And it's really from Philly. It's only, it's less than seven hours. It's not as bad as you would think out of North Carolina. So no, that's a pretty good drive. That's all yeah. right. That's yeah. manageable. Yeah, exactly. So you, you, st you stop once or twice, but, uh, it was good. And how about you? Now, I, I think you played golf this past week. If not Man, let me tell you something. I had, I so I don't so, know much about this. Go ahead. <laughs> shout out first of all, to Nick Ryan from uh, live casino. He yes. put together an amazing tournament at um, Ron Jaworski's Riverwinds Golf Club in, in Deptford, New Jersey. West Deptford or Deptford? One of those two. Actually, I live like 20 minutes away and I can't even remember. But um, that it was Saturday, which was the 97-degree day. Oh. I, so when I get there, right, I get there and already they got like a booze tent <laughs> set up. <laughs> And then normal tents for just brunch, right? And I see like guys get out of the 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 limo that brought people over from live oh. casino that were staying there, okay. and they go straight to the booze tent. And I saw this group of this threesome or foursome, they were doing like shots on shot. It, it had to be two shots a piece, uh, for the for each person in the foursome. And I'm like, it's not. We haven't teed off yet. We're 40 minutes from tee off. It's already about 92 degrees out. These guys are gonna die by the second hole. <laughs> so wait, what what? So you and I were uh, two weeks, two weeks ago or so, we were at a charity event. Uh, yes, it was for what? Bishop McHugh High School down in Cape May area. Right. Jaws is in that. His son, BJ, was a terrific golfer. Yeah, uh, yeah. A couple of, some ex-Eagles. But were there any ex-Eagles or any uh, at former? Tons. Tons. Sports? First of all, Dr. J was there. That was pretty cool. Doc! Doc, really? Doc. Really? Doc was there. Yeah, because, you know, Ron Jaworski had the big guns come out for this. Of course. Of course. So Jaws was there. Uh, I, I was sitting, it's, it was cool to catch up to some people who I started covering when I was first on the beat, like Darwin Walker. Oh yeah. Sure. Big defensive tackle. He was there. Hollis Thomas was there. Uh, Ike Reese was there all dressed in, in either lavender or pink. I don't know. He said it was pink. I said it was kind of salmon lavender, but either way he wore it well. <laughs> um, Jeremiah Trotter was there Trot. and he, his group shot a minus 16. Oh in 90 God. freaking 70 degree weather. I don't know wow. how they did it, but he must be excellent. Uh, who else? Who else? Um, t -t 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 former Eagles. Any Flyers or Sixers? Yeah, or you know, Flyers. Um, the Nasty Knuckles crew was there. Uh, uh, Riley Cote was there. Mm -hmm. And um, Scott Lawton, I think, was there. So it was good to see them. Yeah, yeah, everybody from every sport, you know. Nice. Like I said, Dr. J. Huh? So um, Jaws, of course, was there. It was just good times. Good times seeing good people. Um, had fun catching up, and uh, I got paired with paired with our buddy Mark Farzetta. Oh, did, did he? Did my, this Farzetta. guy, he's right. my twin golfer. I love it. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on. How did you guys hit him? That, that I'm just getting to it. Like we yeah. are like twins for golf. We don't play a whole lot. We're not awful. We're not great. No, you're not and awful. It's you're better than I am. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I was. So the the tournament you got you and I were in. I I was sort of in my stride that day. I, yeah. And by the way, we're talking about a 40 degree differential. When you and I oh. played, it was like 52 degrees. The wind was so that, that oh. day center is 90 something degrees. But I, so I was really feeling it. Uh, and Mark is bald. So he has to like pour a, a an ice bucket of water over his head. Every three holes. It's hysterical. Wow, but uh, Farzee and I are, it's, it's, 
I hit like I can hit like three good shots in a row, and then I go in the tank for three shots. Then I hit three good shots, then I go in the tank three shots. Farz is a little better than me, but he's he does the same thing where he hits some good shots, and then we just hit some crappy ones and just sure. shrug it off. But the cool thing is the two people we played with, they bought into the tournament. There, it was um, uh, a guy named Joe Lewis, uh, who is a retired. He used to work for uh, a regional manager at Sunoco, I believe it was, in the factory okay. here in Philly. And then his son, Joey, right? And um, his son, Joey, walks up to us and goes, we are terrible at golf. My dad hasn't played in 30 years, <laughs> and I play like once a year. And so Mark and I look at each other. Perfect. Like, oh, <laughs> Perfect. We, we can't. Ca- this is good, but I hope they're not expecting us to carry the group because right. we're just here to have fun, too. That's ball. So, so this, so it winds up. This kid Joey is a, is an incredible athlete. He was the best. Wow. He carried us. He was amazing, right? Oh, wow. He was just unbelievable. Cool. Um, he won one of the contests there, like either a long drive or a straight straight one. He was he was great. And the cool thing is, they were happy to like. They had been in a tournament before and got paired with somebody who was a celebrity who who they said was very standoffish and they didn't want them talking to him at all oh, but you know geez. me and mark we don't shut up like yeah. you know <laughs> we had fun when you and I, when you and i played uh it was it was great uh and the see i don't think i've ever played golf in 195 to 100 degree weather maybe i have but i can't remember that wow oh. that that's got it i know you're in a car but that's that's tough i guess you're drinking a lot of water we drinking booze on the course <laughs> uh i was boozing and watering very like simultaneously you know the and sometimes the water was good. like I, I i saw mark i'm like maybe that's a good idea i started pouring water over my head but wow right. <laughs> no nah, so it was nice cool part. so shout out to farzy good. Good. for making it a fun time by the way when i arrived there at like 10 mm-hmm. 45 farzy had a cigar and a bourbon in his hand. I'm like, oh, it's going to be that uh, kind of day. All right. <laughs> tee off time at, tw- at 12? Yeah. The tee- no, the tee off time was at 1. It wound up one. being 1 o'clock. Yeah. What time did you get yeah, done? 6.30. 6. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man. But it, it should have been 6, but everybody was moving kind of slow. But plus, Nick did a good job of having a lot of different things at the holes, like charity. Th- there was one where you yeah. had to hit a marshmallow off a tee, long drive. <laughs> How far can you drive a marshmallow? Which Mitch Williams won. Oh, oh, what, Mitchie Poo was there? I never saw Mitch, but apparently he was there. (laughs) Wow, wow. So it was good stuff. Nick did a great job, so thanks to him. Really appreciate that we were there. And it was was nice to golf with the the Lewises, and they said that they enjoyed golfing with us, so that was cool. One more thing before Mm -hmm. we get to the the show. When you and I played uh, golf uh, at – it was – what was the course name in in, uh, Cape May? It was an incredible course. Oh, my God. Union League. Right. Uh, oh. something. No, yeah, yeah. It was called the Union League Country Club, I believe. And it's yeah. only like a couple years old. It's exclusive. Oh, it was amazing. It was beautiful. Me, uh, shout out to those people. We, we, we really appreciate being able to do that. And Nick Nick Ryan from Live Casino. I, I don't know because he's not even old enough to remember this guy. So because mm-hmm. I think that's over there. That's Dickie Knowles. I'm like, there's no way, dude. You know. Oh, this. Dickie there's was no- at this one, too, by the way. Was he? What a nice yeah. guy. We talked to Dickie for a while. Uh yep. He lives in Chester County, super nice guy, and he's a big time golfer. And I just couldn't believe it. Nick's not even 40 years old. How the hell did you weren't even alive when this guy played? I know it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. 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 Good dude, by the way. Dickie Knowles, really cool dude. Nice Enjoyed guy. talking to him. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we had fun. So again, big shout out to everybody who put it involved because uh I think there was one person that had to leave uh for for either heat exhaustion oh, or, yeah. or whatever so i thought there was gonna be a lot more the way i was watching people downing tito's shots but everybody made it through and had a good time so that was cool. speaking of a good time i know a lot of people had a good time with um our show that we did a couple of weeks ago with john de filippo and so it sounds like based on what you said is that we're going to try to get him back he's been, and he's so been just back. just yeah, nothing's etched in stone here, but something Ab and I have been conceptualizing is trying to do stuff that's more. Core. I wind up doing a series with John where we break down, like you know, how do you st- how do you build a quarter building a quarterback one on one exactly. So yeah. I think that, that's going to be really fun to it, do. It'll be great for people, coach in high school, your kids, whatever level you are. Jonas recognizes if he's not the best quarterback coach in the National Football League, he's one of them. Uh, high sought after guy. He's. He's still under contract, I think, for the Bears, but uh, he's not going to coach this year. He said. Mm-hmm. So um, he, there were just, you know, he's got a, he's got a young family. Uh, he's a golfer, by the way, big time golfer. Um, and uh, he's, I think, he still lives in Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. And uh, look, he went to Radnor High. You know, great, great story. We love that interview. I know some people want us to talk about Nick Falls with him. Trust me, that's on our agenda. That, <laughs> we're all, we're just about to bring it up, but go ahead. <laughs> right. We're, we're on top of it. Trust me. We've got, that's part of our series with him. We've got mm-hmm. a couple things. We don't want to give it away because 
we just don't want to give any our competition ideas of what we're going to do. But we've got something really cool done, going on right. with him that we're going to do. I'll leave it at that. You'll know when we do it. You'll go, oh, that's why you didn't give it away. Yeah. yeah. By the so, way, I was going to say that this past weekend, for the first time in months, felt like the quietest newsworthy weekend in the NFL. There's just there was not a lot of news in the NFL this weekend, other transactionally, other than Nick Foles going back to the Colts. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of, which is not the hugest story in the world, but yeah. Philadelphians obviously thought it was something that would be the most obvious signing ever. Yeah, for sure. They've been on that. Uh, the Colts have been on Nick Foles for a while to be the backup because they don't really have one. Right. Sam, Ell Sam Ellinger would have been the backup, so he'll be the backup there. Uh, but yeah, and then, um, you know, the other thing is people keep asking us about the newsletter. Uh, which is great. I, we've got a ton of signups. So what do they need to do to sign up for this thing? The newsletter comes out every Thursday. Uh, it's very easy to sign up. You can go to insidethebirds.com and immediately a screen will pop up asking you for your name and your email address. Just fill it out and you are then a subscriber and it is free. Uh, you can also find it the hard way, which is if you listen to our podcast or watch our, our shows on YouTube, you can go to the um, this info box on either platform. And then I think we have the link to sign up to it there. I think going to inside the .com is easier, but you know, some people don't want to cruise the internet. They would rather do it that way. That's fine too. But those are the two best ways. And then I always say, if, if, if for whatever reason, those two ways don't work for you, you can just email us at inside the birds at gmail.com and say, Hey, please add my email address here to your subscription list. Then we can do that too. Got it. And uh, our last one was really, our last one, we lucked out because we had some good stuff lined up, but then the James Bradbury signing <laughs> happened. Because remember, we had the Q, the return of Q&A last week. Um, and unfortunately for them, they theirs dropped the day that Bradbury signed. So so about 15, I don't want to say 15 minutes, five minutes of their, their show got outdated really quickly because they were no, talking about the lack of a second good. cornerback and this yeah. and that. But that's okay. It was still a great show. And they'll sure. be back again uh, this Wednesday morning, too, to talk about that and more. And on that, listen to, I don't want to give it away, who um, Avon, uh, Jason compared N'Kobe Dean to. I don't, if you haven't heard it. It's a great comp. It, I was, wow. I And I've covered this player and I've met this guy before. And this is a mm -hmm. wonderful guy. Uh, long time in a linebacker in the National Football League. But I'm not going to give it away. You have to listen. I love the description. I think cool. it's a great comp because it's not an obvious one. It's no, not, I you know, like, it. no. I, you know, like every, every Aiden Hutchinson is uh, is like Jared Allen and um, Karloftis is Ryan Kerrigan. Like we we really need to be better as doing comps. Yeah, I don't see that <laughs> at as all. a media. Karloftis, yeah, I don't no, see that I mean terrible. especially Kerrigan. like oh, uh, a white defensive end from Purdue has to be <laughs> right. just like. Ryan but, but, Kerrigan, like you couldn't have found any other defensive end that George Karloftis reminded people of. By the but... way, Kerrigan, much better pass rusher. Hello, I I know what happened last year, but in his prime, come on. Yeah, yeah. So either way, um, but I like this comp that they had. I, I agree with you because it's not an obvious one, but it makes a lot of sense the way he broke it down. So that'll be good too. And then again, Q and A will be out on Wednesday. So I've asked them. This is for our listeners to know. I've asked them to get very. Um, kind of scheme wonky for the next two episodes. The first episode, I just wanted their opinion to break down the moves. But now I really want them to get into what multiple front defenses might look like, how that might favor or not favor the defense, and awesome. offensively bringing in A.J. Brown, being more of a passing offense, or is it a run? You know, I want them to get very, very scheme heavy here over the next two weeks and trying to figure out what they think is the direction of the defense and the off. We'll do probably either offense or defense tomorrow or this week, I mean, and then um, the, the opposite one will be next week. So the next two weeks are going to be real X's and O-E, you know, real real football junkie stuff, all right? Cool. I think people are going to awesome. really like that. Can't wait. Can't wait. All right. Um, let's get into uh, a few of the topics that people have asked us about. Before we do that, I want to uh, remind everybody about our new partners, Devacore. Because over the last year, we've seen what's now known as the Great Resignation. It's made it clear that there's no better time to change careers than the present. Devacor is a Philly area, family-owned career development company that helps guide hardworking professionals on the path to new and fulfilling careers. Unlike those big companies in the career development space that offer the same cookie-cutter career advice and services, Devacor's career certified career development team is hands-on, passionate, knowledgeable. 
They take pride working closely with their clients to ensure that their experience is personalized and tailored to their needs. So whether you're in need of a new resume, cover letter, a CV, or you want to optimize your LinkedIn profile, or if you just want to work with a career coach, Devacor has you covered in all spaces. So go to devacor.com slash bird to schedule a free 15-minute career coaching consultation, and you get an exclusive 15% discount on your next order. That's devacor.com slash birds. All right. Let us uh, attack here the first question, Adam, that uh, people have asked us about, which has been a – we were going to – even if we didn't do an Ask ITB, I have a feeling we were going to spend five to, to ten minutes on this anyway. So go ahead. Well, it, Jesse Bates, it won't take long because <laughs> – it's all internet speculation. There's nothing going on with the Eagles and Jesse Bates. You know, hate to hate to burst the bubble. Right. Folks who have been with us a while. We'll tell you when we know a team's interested. Uh, we told you that they were interested in James Bradbury. We expect them to pursue him. They did. Didn't know they'd get definitely get him because there were a lot of teams involved. But uh, the Eagles did a good job in terms of the negotiation. They didn't get him. He wanted ten million. They they're paying him seven and a half million with upside of ten. Uh, but they they did a good job on that one. But uh, Anthony Tuminello asks. In the context of a glaring needed safety, I can't help but notice the current situation between the Bengals and Jesse Bates. He's one of the best young safeties in the league, but it seems to be an impasse with the team with a franchise tag and new contract. I find it curious they drafted two safeties relatively early this year uh, if as of making preparation for life without him. I wouldn't go that way, Anthony. First of all, Dax Hill will not be a pure safety for them, I'm told. They're going to play him a corner, uh, he'll play slot corner. They're going to move him around for matchup purposes. So he's going to be a jack-of-all-trades player who... If you heard our our series with Greg Cosell when we went over the safety for the draft, he loves Dax Hill from Michigan, who was their who was their first round pick. So, I would not call him a free safety or safety pure. I, he's going to be a hybrid player for them. Uh, also, Von Bell's contract up was their strong safety. Tyson Anderson was a fifth round safety. So, fifth round safety is you have to think are just going to be a backup. So, when you really look at it. Them walking away from Jesse Bates would not make a lot of sense. And a couple of things we'll add here. The Bengals, the way it's explained to me by a lot of teams that have dealt with the Bengals over the years, they simply do not trade players. They don't do it unless they absolutely have to. I'll give an example. Believe it or not, there were a lot of players in on John Ross a couple of years ago. They would call the Bengals. They would not trade him. They, they, were, they decided to let his contract run out. How ridiculous is that? Uh, that's pretty ridiculous. But, I yeah. mean, I mean, they they – what? How They're long? Did Carson, Absolutely. How long did Carson Palmer have to sit out before they finally traded him? The, the, the fake retirement, right? Exactly. Right. right. A, that's right. right. He had to fake his retirement before yeah. he finally got traded. Yeah. Mike, there, this is the way it's funny to me. Mike Brown's like his dad, the late Paul Brown. He just believes that the club has a leverage. If you, they're old school, you play your contract out. We will decide where they're going to keep you, or in this case, put the franchise tag on you. So. Yeah, we're in May now. This is just this is just internet speculation. What's going on now? As we get closer to July, late July. Now again, he doesn't have to report because he hasn't signed his tender. He could just do whatever he wants. He doesn't have to sign at all. Really, if he don't want to play, he just not sign it. Yeah, see, but that's the he thing. Wants, he can't. Yeah. Uh, he theoretically cannot. Is not a, in, in position to pull a Carson Palmer. Palmer had made a lot of money already. Uh, he's a quarterback and hide him. I mean, Jesse Bates is still on his rookie. De- well, he's about to be franchise tag, but if he doesn't he's play, right, yeah. he, doesn't, he hasn't made a ton of money. It's not like he, he wasn't even a first round pick, if I'm not Correct. mistaken. Correct. Second round. Yep. So, I mean, I, if I, I, I can see the Bengals saying, yeah, I dare you to, to, to not play for me for a year or, so, right. or pull so, a Levy on so, Bell, you know? Right. But what, what got, what got people stoked, we must've got 10 emails about this and message board questions. Because I guess he favorited something. What was it again? You told me, and I saw. So that. there was a PFF tweet about how awesome the Eagles' offense is, and it showed all their, you know, AJ Brown and uh, Devontae Smith and Jalen Hurts, I think, and Miles Sanders yeah. and Goddard, and he liked it. So people went crazy. And <laughs> what a world we live in, where you if know. the Eagles are rumored to like somebody, or if there's a hot name out there who's on, people are then checking everything that they've liked. On who has time to do this? <laughs> I didn't I, even know that before. I just can't believe people have time. I mean, right. it's one thing if you, if it comes across your timeline, but to actively go to someone's Twitter account and then see what they've liked, my gosh. Well, think of it this way, right? They'll to move this forward, and then we'll move on to the next question. Well, I, want, I do want to talk about the safety issue for a little bit. Yeah, we're right? going to get into that. No, we're, that's oh, okay. what we're going to get into. So, so think about this, right? The other thing that people are pointing to, well, 
is that Bates is a free safety, right? He's a post safety. Yeah. Last year, we were told the tape was not very good. Two years ago, he was tremendous two years ago. This this past season, production sometimes is not fair when you're safety. It depends on how they're being used. But we're told the tape was up and down. Was It wasn't great. And the production was way down. Where two years ago, he was an absolute superstar. Mm-hmm. Very good player. Let's yeah. call it like it is. Very good player. But so so people are like, well, he's much better than Marcus Epps. No question he is. No question he is. But just understand, folks, that you would have to give up. Com- We're not going to get into the compensation because they're not on him right now. But if they are, we'll have not only, not only will we be on it, we'll get Cosell on. He'll break his tape down for us. Because if we think there's a chance of this, ha- this happening, mm-hmm. the, the A.J. Brown stuff, we just didn't have any time because it was actually during the draft. It all broke, as you know. Any interest never got out. It just broke during the draft, so there's nothing we can do about it. Other than Greg, we we had Greg on when we did the post draft stuff, and it just happened that they made the trade for AJ Brown to the draft. So Greg, as he said, fits the Eagles' offense like a freak. Uh, what did he say? Like a freak. freak fits the glove. offense like a freaking glove. I couldn't yep. believe that. <laughs> Something he, he was so um, I don't know inspired by the move. Like it, it yeah. really. You could just tell, like a tape junkie. Yeah. When he sees something that goes with something really well, it kind of excites him, you know. Yeah, so like it's no, all Greg got with, no like, doubt. Yeah, excited no doubt. about it. So, so uh, you know, just to move this along here, Marcus Epps right now is their starting free safety. They like Marcus Epps. I mean, he <clears throat> had a good year last year, but this is a guy Jesse Bates, who is a young guy, an emerging star. You, you could people could debate what the tape looked like last year. It was inconsistent. We were told. But the fact of the matter is, guy's really, really talented. And to me, it's on another level. But the problem is, it's you have to you have to pay him. Remember, it's you're you're looking at somewhere around 14 million a year, and you got to trade for him. So it's just. Oh, by the way, the Eagles can make this trade. This this idea that they can't afford is complete nonsense. They absolutely could do. Oh it. yeah, they could. Yeah, it's it's it doesn't. They can do whatever post. they want. I mean, they could. They, all they got to do is create seven dummy years. What they give Bradbury four dummy years? To uh, one and a half. Yeah, the, I got the breakdown a couple of days ago. It's uh, four dummy years, a million and a half signing bonus. The, the prorated uh, part of the dummy years, the signing bonus is prorated. Uh, seven and a half, full, seven and a half million fully guaranteed at signing. Uh, incentives based on playing time, team achievement. I don't have all of them, but there's just some other. If, if I get the exact breakdown of the incentives, I will we'll put them out here. But. Um, so yeah, you you minimum base salary first year of one point oh one million one point one million. Now it's a massive signing bonus. So you you could keep the first year cap number around six or seven million. Yeah. So, so the only problem is you don't have to worry about the rookies. They sign them all. That, that wipes out almost all of your cap. But as you said many times, how about them extending Javon Hargrave's contract? Right now in um, seven days from now. Today's the twenty third. So is it yes. eight? How many? How many days are in this month? Thirty first, May. Thirty uh, first, yeah. yes. Right. So eight days, nine June first. Then th- they will get some cap relief on June first because yes, of their from two Cops contract. Yes. Right. So that which will be pretty significant. So they'll they're about to. Yeah, I don't know what the numbers will. I, I I don't know how much they're going to get back. I, I'm not sure. Well, it's going to be something. I mean, from two, the from I think yeah, they, they are from Fletch and somebody else, right? Yeah. Did they use it on two people? I just know they're going to have more more uh, cap space available, but the big one here for Hargrave is, yeah, his cap number is seventeen point eight million this season. Oh my goodness gracious! They could clean this thing up, and his base salary is twelve point seven five million. And they by the, by the way, they restructured him um, after one year. They they restructured him in in March of twenty one. Mm. So um, and he's got plenty of dummy years, but again, if you really want to lower that cap salary, that cap number they can do it and significantly by extending his contract so again right. to move this along this is enough on jesse base because they're not on him right now but you were just giving me the ballpark yes they absolutely get this done it's not a problem it's just we're in may now and the Bengals historically don't make in fact if you looked up player trades Bengals mm-hmm. last 20 years they're the bottom five i was told they don't wow. they just don't do it they did Corey dillon they did disgruntled uh, they, they, as you mentioned, Carson Palmer, they didn't have a choice after the fake retirement. It just right. they had to do it. They wouldn't do it. He he, basically fake retired, and then he, he give him and uh, his agent David Dunn credit. They got him out of there too, and uh, John T. Filippo coached him with the Raiders. 
Right. So that's it. That's 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 it on Jesse Bates. So so the Eagles safety situation, I think, you know, it's it's we obviously know it's not great with the, to me it's it's a depth thing. It, talent of course is fair, but depth is the bigger issue. And I say that that's a bigger issue than talent only because you you can't fix everything overnight. I mean, they had an opportunity to and they they chose not to, so they went and strengthened other areas instead, but you're not going to have a pro bowl caliber position group at every position. So you already got a pretty darn good offensive line. You got a good wide receiver group that you have a lot of money committed into now. Um, you've got your tight end that you, I mean, you're at your defensive line, a lot of money too. Your cornerbacks have both made the Pro Bowl. Uh, your linebackers are upgraded. They're not Pro Bowlers, but they're much, they're better than what you had last year, oh, yeah. uh, theoretically. So, I mean, it, it's, it is what it is. You're not going to overnight just snap your fingers and have, you know, all pros and Pro Bowlers at every single position. But the roster is so. Oh my God! It's 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 like I don't. Yeah, want to that's what I'm better. saying. The roster is better, so you can't complain. Way better. If you if you're into this season, like, oh man, I'm really happy. Except this safety picture, you just have to like come back to earth and realize that that you it, you could have had a better safety picture, but then maybe you don't have James Bradbury, uh, or maybe you don't have something that's at, at either linebacker or wide receiver. Maybe you don't have AJ Brown. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, you just you know the team's upgraded about as much as a team can upgrade, and if by chance. Jesse Bates becomes, like you said, it's, it's very unlikely. But if it happens, I mean, that's a that's one killer off. That may be the best off season ever. Oh my god! I, I tell you, I and I get you know we we don't cheerlead here, but it's great for traffic. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, that Bradbury show that we did last Thursday was it? When the hell was it last Thursday? Yeah. Oh, the traffic is just ridiculous. <laughs> so I, I'm all for it, man. Give me, give me something big. I, 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 I remember what, what did we say before the draft? My, my buddy who listens to our show, who's an Eagle season ticket holder, mm -hmm. said any surprises coming? Like I don't know. I was like, what, what would you call surprise? Boom, AJ Brown. <laughs> <laughs> there you that go. Was Trade for AJ Brown. Wonderful, absolutely <laughs> wonderful. I, I love it, man. I, I'm, I'm all for it. But uh, again, we're only in May. The Bengals historically don't trade players, but you know what? As we've learned in the show, in five years, stranger things have happened. I wouldn't get your hopes up, but I, I don't rule anything out. Even if they're not in it, which we've heard they're not in it right now, but even if they're not in it right now, what happens when we get to late July? What he, if he doesn't sign his tender right, and he doesn't report? Right. I mean, t look, the, the Eagles followed up with a date. Like the teams that called the the Titans on A.J. Brown, they were told he was not available. And the ke Eagles kept calling, and they – they called the week of the draft. They found out that they were they were at a contract impasse. Boom! They got them. So there, you never know. It's done. So the the only thing I've been thinking about lately, as far as the way the team is constructed, before we get to the next question, is that they have a they have a, a lot of money now tied into the wide receiver position, which is not a position they normally have this much money tied into. But obviously, AJ Brown is making about twenty what twenty five million a year, right? Four years. Yeah, I yeah. know how it's. I know it's not. Doesn't appear that way, way in the it, books, but it's really not twenty five million a year. But yeah, it's been it closer to twenty, that. maybe. It's between. I would say more like twenty two between twenty two and twenty three. Okay, that's still yeah. significant. It that's, is that's, sure. That's a big oh, yeah. jump. Sure. Um, you've got a lot of money committed at least this year for corner. Uh, you got a lot of money in that offensive and defensive line. I just wonder if Jalen Hurts has a good year, and I'm not. When people say that, they're like, "Oh, does that mean he wins a playoff game?" You'll right. know with your eyes if you like if he loses in the first round, but but they lose thirty eight to thirty four, and he throws five touchdowns. You don't hold it against him that they lost the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure, so the math probably didn't add up on that, but you know what I'm saying. Like, it's to me, it's about does he play better than he did last year? Has he taken the next step? He's mm -hmm. gonna be owed at that point. If you're the Eagles, and he takes that a big step up, you're gonna have to start talking contract extension with him. And sure. if you start talking extension with him, the number, the number starts at forty. I mean, that's where it starts. That's what Dak's making, right? Forty. Yeah. Now, here's the thing, though. You, Dak is a way better football player. No offense to Jalen. But Hurt. I know. But we're we're we might be saying by the end of this season, if Jalen takes a big step up, that he has now entered close to Dak territory or Dak, but a year later, so the tag is high. That the money is high. It, it it a couple things on Hurts. You don't need to do it. You would he would have to play so well this season on your point that you feel compelled. Uh oh, wow, he played like lights out this season. Let's get this done now. You know, the Eagles will do this, they've done this since Banner was the team president, sure. right? and now with Roseman as the GM, they know the numbers are only to get bigger as you're talking about. So, you want to get to him early. Whereas mm -hmm. he's got to be so good 
that they go, oh, we have to do this now. We're not going to wait. Because the Cowboys, Joe Banner told me this years ago. He goes, it's just, if you look at the way the Cowboys do business, they've made so many mistakes in waiting. Why do they wait? Why do they wait? Right. Deep. That's why, I mean, yeah. we, we had this discussion at the end of the last podcast. We think the Eagles are no worse than a 10 win. Anything can happen, but they're oh, floor expectation and- wise. Floor is 10, yeah. ceiling 11, maybe 12. <laughs> so if way, that happens, yeah. One guy said, for, a guy emailed me, says, we're out of our minds. He said, 14 should be the ceiling. He cursed me out. He goes, he, I love your show, but you guys don't want to bleep you're talking about 14 <laughs> oh, <laughs> ceiling. <laughs> I should have. This should have been of on course. SITB. <laughs> of course, the Eagles didn't even win fourteen games when they won the Super Bowl, right? Weren't they thirteen and three that year? Or... Sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're out of our minds. They're winning fourteen games. I know. How crazy of us not to think about that? I got that. you. I got uh, you. I mean... um, so, so the point is, let's say they win eleven, or uh, let's say they win, yeah, eleven games, and he makes the Pro Bowl, and is he's clearly better. That's a really good season. They were thirteen. And and it would be the third. He would be improved upon improved upon improved. They're going to want to give him an extension. I don't think they're going to want to wait one more year and get him closer to, to free agency. Right. It would be just as you set it up. It would have to be obvious that he – it's not yes. just a playoff game. That That's really – that's secondary. It's the entirety of his season. It's – Right. Begin and is he a reason why they were so good? Like right. in 17, Wentz was a big – I know he got hurt. The Eagles are not getting the Super Bowl without Wentz because he was so dominant before his knee injury at, at L.A., because Nick Foles is not playing like that. That's just he's not over a full season. He's never done it. it right. In a real offense, not the gimmick offense that he played with, you know, the, uh, the, the what was it, whatever the stats were when he put up those massive numbers. It was in a gimmick offense. League figured him out. Yeah. Um, so in a real offense, and by the way, they're going to be throwing a lot this year. You, 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 well, that's they're going to want to be throwing a lot. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to. And, and and if he does, if he can't handle it, he won't be the quarterback. I'll, yeah. I'll I'll go on record right now saying that. If if in May here, I'll say this: if uh, first half of the season, if they're throwing the ball like I expect, and they're not playing well because of him, he won't be the quarterback. They'll, they'll, That's true. They won't. You're ball. saying they won't readjust the offense this time. They'll just try no. to to see if Gardner Minshew can do it or somebody else. Whatever. So, but yeah. they want him to. Obviously, they want Hurts to be the guy for the full season. They want to give him a full shot. But they did what they did to win. And that's great coaching. That's not right. going to be acceptable of this franchise year two. Absolutely no way. Now, it, it, it particularly when you trade for A.J. Brown and give up a first or third round pick and then give him a massive contract. No, you're throwing right. the football. This, this is not the Titans offense, please. True, true. No doubt. So I'm just wondering if they if it does, they do decide that they want to pay him and extend him and it's going to be a pretty hefty price tag and they already have about four or five guys locked into some pretty big salaries. They're going to have to do some maneuvering there. But that's sure. why they've gotten younger. That's you know it's what the drafts last two years have been all about. But we'd we'd have to see who would be kind of having to go surprisingly because to make room for a big contract from the quarterback uh, that well, usually happens. So remember, Cox's contract is up. Yeah, he'll be up starts next year, barring something unforeseen. Brandon Graham's contract is up after the season. Mm, true. Uh, we'll, we'll see how he does. Derek Barnett, they can get out of it after one year. Hmm, um, there are things they can do. Yeah, right? there are things they can do. Yeah. All right. Uh, we will get to our next question in a second. First, if are you ready to launch your new career in coding? Treehouse has one of the best and most affordable online classrooms for you. At Treehouse, we've rethought the learning process and built a proven system to get you the skills and knowledge you need to achieve your goals. When you're done with a course, you haven't just watched a video. You've learned, practiced, and absorbed a concept. Or you chose to build a portfolio, create a network, and land your dream job with our boot camp style of tech degree program. Land a dev job this year. Whatever your goal is, Treehouse will get you there. Get 50% off your first month as a podcast listener through Treehouse's special discount link. That's teamtreehouse.com slash sign up underscore code slash podcorn courses. I'll read that again. Teamtreehouse.com slash sign up underscore code slash podcorn courses. All right. So let's move on to the next question. All right. And by the way, Anthony, you know, you said it would be a move if they got uh, Jesse Bates, trade my opinion. It, it would be on par with A.J. Brown. Oh, it would be. And would put us squarely in the contender category if we aren't already. I, Anthony, this is probably in the five years Jeff and I have done the show, most optimistic I've been about any Eagles roster. Uh, it, it, they're just so loaded. 
Um, I was more optimistic about the 2018 team, but um, this really? is pretty close. Yeah, well, I actually thought, and I still believe it. Oh, because it was Super Bowl the year before. just didn't but, happen. I thought the yeah. 2018 team was a more talented – I thought it was going to be a more talented team on paper than the 2017 team. I thought adding Michael Bennett was huge. I mean, he was a really good, versatile pass rusher. Play that. Yeah. Um, they had gotten rid of Torrey Smith, right? But they brought in – was it – uh, who's the former Steeler, Dolphin, Viking? Mike speaker? Wallace. Yeah. Mike Wallace. And I, I, at the time, and I will stand by this, I think Mike Wallace was a more accomplished and better wide receiver than Torrey Smith. But he got hurt. Oh, so it no, didn't no. happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, they had brought back uh, Corey Clement and Jay Ajayi. Those guys got hurt immediately. Right. Um, they were still pretty good at linebacker because Brad- Bradham was back and Hicks was back. Um, so I, and you know, Darby was back. They brought back, I thought they added, I thought that they were a deeper team. Um, but you know, obviously Carson, Carson had the back injury at the end of the year and he struggled a little bit in the middle of the year. And, you know, um, Alshon Jeffrey drops a a pass against the saints or else they're in the next round of the playoffs and who knows, but I really thought that team on paper was as good, if not better than the Super Bowl team. Well, remember, Jernigan had the odd injury off the field. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And Roddy McLeod also got, what, uh, got hurt. Right. And then, as you mentioned, Mike Wallace. Was it that Tampa game he got hurt? Broke yeah. His foot? I think Ajayi got hurt in that game, too. I don't think he ever played the NFL again, if I'm not mistaken. No, he did not. Which is incredible. This guy, if you remember, he signed the biggest receiver contract in NFL history. Right. Uh, was it with the Dolphins? Yes, it was the Dolphins. Massive contract. Obviously, it was overpriced, but he was an elite deep threat. Yep. And I, I was all favor. I was like, "Hey, they got a deep threat," and then he gets hurt, and it just, it, it just, they were never the same after that. Uh, the, their depth was hit. Oh, they, they signed Haloti Nada that year. Haloti Nada. That's right. Yeah. Another guy who got hurt. I thought that was great. I mean, they, they had lost Vinny, but they brought in, um, again, they, they brought in, uh, Michael Bennett and Haloti Nada. I mean, you're talking about two All Pro players. Plus, Chris Long was there. It was yep, uh, Josh Chris was coming back. Josh yep. Sweat went on, on IR that year, I think. Um, but yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, I just feel like, uh, Anthony, before we move on to the next question, I, th- I'm super optimistic with this team. Uh, as I said last week, that over under, I haven't checked uh, DraftKings or FanDuel, but uh, that eight and a half, man, I, if Hertz is even average, and they still re- re- they still re- they stay relatively healthy. They're getting over eight and a half wins. That I don't even want to say the L word, mm. but come on, got to go over that. All right, next question. Okay, this is a this is a great one, but bi- this is from Billy Grant. We have not heard from Billy before. Um, this is a long email, but I love that he's a transplanted Dallas fan from Trent, New Jersey, living in all no, places. No, 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 he's Dallas. not a Dallas fan. He's living in Dallas. He's right, an no, Eagles right. fan. <laughs> right, he's a transplanted Eagles fan, living it from Trenton, <laughs> living in Dallas. How the hell did that happen, Billy? You, oh, you, you search me. I don't know how the hell did that. Happen. In fact, I'd like to hear from everyone who. I'd like to hear from some of you guys who are Eagle fans in other parts of the country, whether it's Washington D.C., Giants country, uh, wh- whatever. Now, what's it like to go to a game when the Eagles are in town and how you treat it? I'm very interested to see how your how the opponent treats you if you're if, you know it's an away game for the Eagles and how they treat you, but. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, so Billy says I listen to your podcast on a regular basis. You guys do a great job. I wanted to let you know how much I appreciate it. Thank you. I miss the days you don't have a show. It's like sitting in a room with good friends just talking ball. I really get pumped when you when you announce Q&A is back. Yes, they are back. I've been enjoying the hype the Eagles are getting so far this offseason. I'm ca- cautiously optimistic. The job Howie's done this offseason in paper has been outstanding. Agreed. He has turned an old plotting team into a young, talented, and hungry squad in a relatively short period of time. Would you would you say that's accurate? I mean, were they that old? Well, I think after the 2019 season, they were old, right? I yeah. mean, you had Jason Peters doing his song and dance at left tackle for way too long. I mean, Jason Kelsey was old, still is, but he's playing well. Um, you had, you know, Brandon still, uh, Haloti Nada we just talked about. Was he on the 2019 team? I don't think it was uh-huh. Haloti. Somebody else who was um, – was getting up there. Uh, but, you know, the, the safeties, McLeod, who was coming off the injury, he was getting up there. Um, Malcolm Jenkins was on the, the 19 team. That was his last year. Oh, 19th, so, uh, Malik Jackson. 
who got yeah hurt. Malik Malik Jackson. Yeah. That was their veteran that year. Yeah, so he and Jernigan was, uh, came back. Yeah, Jernigan. yeah, he was up there in age. So they had Andrew Sandejo for half the year. They had brought oh, Vinny yeah. Curry back, if you remember. Um, so they had some guys. Timmy Jernigan was still on the team at that point. Mm-hmm. So Orlando Skandrick was on the team for a little while. So I get what he's saying. <laughs> I definitely get what he was saying. Um, yeah. The, and plus, they weren't really getting a whole lot from some of their dra- – like J.J. Ortega-Whiteside was their second-round pick. And and um, who's the first rounder? Andre Dillard wasn't was able to play the next year. So, yeah, they were. They were they were old at a lot of key positions there. Um, so, But I don't know that I would say it's been a short period. I mean, it's been since that time. I mean, because 2020, they started the year with, you know, Rager and Tim Hightower were like – seeing a lot of snaps and then you know they had to play right. Jack Driscoll at right tackle so it's it's been this will be year three of Howie kind of moving on from the 2019 season where they were yep. starting I think people tend to think of Carson Wentz leaving as when the replenishing started but if you remember after the 2019 year when they lost to Seattle Carson got hit by Clowney oh yeah at the combine Howie had talked about how they had made moves in 2018 and 19 with the, the window and that it was time to start replenishing the roster then and there. Not it would be, not when Carson left. It was a year before Carson left that sure. they were really starting that. So this will be the third year of trying to get to the, you know, the roster younger. Well, it's funny. If you looked at their average age that year, well, what, what, when Peters was on the roster last with Kelsey, uh-huh. it had them so higher up on the average per – and if Sproles, he ran, don't forget, he he right. did, he he waited it too. But Peters and Kelsey being on the roster, and it's going to raise your average age much higher. Mm-hmm. And then when you remove Jason Peters, is what thirty nine or forty now, <laughs> just changes. Yeah. Uh, but no, this is a, we want to trim this. Your Billy, I love your email, but we for time purposes, you make a good point. If you look at because he's also talking about the optimism. Look at their schedule to start the season. He talks about Detroit. We know mm-hmm. they're a little bit better. The rushers a little bit better than Jacksonville, Washington. Now Washington with Wentz, they're going to be better because he's a better. Wait, you said Jacksonville? I thought week two was Minnesota. Right, but he's talking about the first four or five games. He's oh, oh well, my fault. I thought you were going sequentially. Right. My bad. Right. No, he's at the Vikes week two, and then uh, Wentz and Doug Peterson. This is a very nice schedule. It, it doesn't mean they're going to win, go four and zero, but right. you're right, Billy. It, this is a very nice schedule. To, to set up the team for, for success. And he finishes – I wasn't aware that Chris Sims said this. He says, um, Chris Sims apparently made this point about Hertz doesn't have to go balls to the wall. He just needs to distribute the ball wisely. He has the playmakers now to make that happen. I do believe Hertz plays clean and lets his playmakers do the thing, do the job. Good things are going to happen. Yeah, I, I, that's a fair way to say it. So that's – Billy, by the way, that's why I'm so optimistic with this team because they've addressed so many needs – through free agency in the draft on both sides of the football, as Jeff said earlier, the only one they haven't addressed is safety. You, you, you're just not going to be able to, to, to address every need in one offseason. You can, but you have to be careful because, as you said earlier, if you, yeah, they could they could make a trade for Jesse Bates if, if, if they wanted to do this and if the Bengals were willing, but you, they could afford to do it. They could, but eventually you're going to have to pay. Like it's going to hurt you somewhere else down the line. So that, that mm. would be my, my issue. I love his concept of if Jalen Hurts can play, what did he say, a little bit more um, calmly or something like that? Or He said, okay, he just – I like this one. He just needs to distribute the ball wisely. He has wisely. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, Jalen Hurts can be a slayer of a quarterback if he can just slow the game down a little bit and be a distributor and then run when the pocket collapses totally. I don't want to ever take that away from his game. but. Trey Thomas did a really good job in his video breakdowns for us uh, after the season of showing how there are times when Jalen breaks out of the pocket under the perception of pressure or seeing color. In fact, he broke down when, when a running back crosses his eyes to come pick up a blitzer and pass protection. He even Jalen even then tended to get herky jerky and try to get out of the pocket, almost sensing like the pocket was collapsing when it was literally just his own teammate crossing in front of him to pick up a blitzer in pass protection. But if he can just kind of slow that down and really be a distributor, um, because this, this offense with these receivers is built for the intermediary game and the turn and run, right? It's not, I don't, this is not the bomb 
deep bomb offense. It's the 15, 20, 25 yard turn and run. You got guys like AJ Brown and Dallas Goddard who can catch a pass in traffic, shed a tackle, and then add on an extra 5, 10, 15 yards. So if if Jalen Hurts can be very calm and be a distributor, he can be a hell of a quarterback. And that that would be an interesting thing to see happen. Although they and this comes on our on our final question here uh, from Ramon. This plays into what you just talked about. The timing is interesting here. I think it's mm. from Ramon because he gave his email address, didn't put his name, but he had Ramon in his email address, which we won't give out. But we're right, hold say, up though. Hold up before yeah. we get to Ramon, since yeah. that's our last question. I want to uh, direct our our listeners to our friends at phlsportsnation.com, enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all Philadelphia sports teams for the fan by the fan. That's their motto. So make sure you check them out at PHL Sports Nation. And on Twitter at PHL Sports Nation. Um, so, and we'll pause real quick for another word from our great sponsors, including our friends at Sky Motor Cars. And if you hop out there to Westchester, PA, to see our friends at Sky Motor Cars, make sure you tell them Adam and Jeff sent you. You will get a great deal, not a good deal, a great, great and, deal. And and buy sell your car to them. They are buying cars. They they. Absolutely, will buy your car. You know, they, it's they in will. condition. They are buying cars. The the uh, the used car dealerships in this country, uh, like Sky, and Sky's the best one in in Philly, no question about it. Well, they are buying cars. You, this is the best time to ever sell your car. It, it probably, but certainly, my lifetime, because sadly, because of the chip shortage in cars, um, it's just there are not a lot of cars available. So that's why I'm debating on selling mine. I haven't decided yet. You can do it, man. Make twice the value yep. that you ordinarily make. Got to do it. Yep. Now. Yep. All right. So what does Ramon have for us? So Ramon says, hey, ITB, I was watching film on Hertz, and I noticed that he's not able to throw comfortably further than 50 yards, it seems. I watched all of his throws back from college and NFL throws just to make sure. Yeah. Now, the one that he did hit was an unbelievable pass, to, in the, although he didn't play well that game. It was the Niners game in week two. Right. Uh, the bomb to Watkins down the right sideline. Yep. It was a great throw. And and what ha see, he's kind of guy because he doesn't have a big arm. He's got to really get his body and his torque into it. You got to give him a clear picture. Roll him out with no one around him. And he's just got to heave it. But that's not his game, as Jeff was saying. His game is going to be short to intermediate. Could he throw it long? Yes. But it's really not his game. Is it something that he can fix? Is he strong? Mm -hmm. uh, is he strong enough to do it? Would it worry you? Well, we're going to talk to John D. Filippo about that uh, in, in next month. Because uh, I know he he graded his tape. John, uh, I think he said he interviewed him at the Combine, but more importantly, he watched his tape. We'll ask him if he, if he recalls, but John will tell us about arm strength and whether you can improve it. I've talked to him about this before. He he probably sees this differently than most coaches. There's certain things you can do to improve it. Uh, Greg Cosell's told us. Tom Brady's improved. Drew Brees has improved. We, we understand, folks, as our Hall of Fame quarterbacks, but we're just saying, we're giving an example. Yes, you can improve it, but every... Not everyone agrees with it, so we'll, we'll talk to uh, we'll talk to John about it and get his opinion. We'll talk to Greg the next time we have him on about this, mm -hmm. uh, partic particularly on with Greg. What did he see from from Hertz in terms of his arm strength? This is actually a great subject, Ramon, that you asked this. Yeah, yeah, we've talked about this before. Um, Jalen Hertz can throw the ball 50, 60 yards in the air. That's not a problem for him. Uh, what what makes him different than say? Justin Herbert or Joe Flacco or Michael Vick, guys with renowned arm strength, is that for, for Jalen Hurts to throw the ball that far, he needs to be – he needs, like, load-up time. It's not a flick of the wrist for him. He's got to put more body – he has to have all of his mechanics correct to make that throw, unlike some of those guys, Lamar Jackson, who can do it, like, you know, falling off his left foot, yeah. getting hit in the head with a cleat in his rear end. I mean, he's amazing like that. So – um <laughs> So for Jalen to be able to do that, he needs like the environment to be much better for him. He can't just do it uh, in improv way. Um, so you saw like that one you're talking about where he can throw the ball there. Also, he can do it if he throws the ball with timing and anticipation because he, when you throw the ball in two seconds, the pass rush is not on you. So if he sees something, the ball snapped two seconds and he gets his whole body into it, he can do that. But where you've seen him struggle from an arm talent standpoint is when he tries to make a deep throw while he's kind of sort of navigating around the pocket. I think against the Giants, he had one where he kind of faked and ran back and then did it. 
and then it, it floated in the air um, because he j- he can't put his full strength into it. His feet aren't set. So, uh, and then he's not the only one, but that's what sort of separates the major arm talents. And I think also it's fair to say, like, he can't thread the needle with the velocity that Josh Allen and Justin Herbert do on a 15 yarder, right? Whether it's an inbreaker or an outbreaker. He, but again, right. yeah. he's, he's good enough to throw the ball and not have it picked off and, and throw it with, uh, with, with timing and timing and anticipation. But we have noticed there were times where he just, struggled on even even those routes because if it wasn't perfect then he sails it because he you know over the head or he just doesn't get it on target right his he's ball not, placement really did improve though as the year went on he's really not a time anticipation throw he rarely does it he, right. in fact uh, that that was the one thing with him is because he had trouble getting off the first read that's the hope now he's in the second year of this offense and the scheme that'll be better and and we know he's very close to aj brown but it's not like he's played with him here so they they have to get their timing down now he's back with Devonte smith and Watkins and, and Goddard. So the hope is that he starts doing that the more he works with these guys and he gets used to being with these coaches. So we'll see. Uh, but the thing is, they've got so much talent around him now that that's the great thing. You, you can't complain anymore. Now it's just the coaches to keep coaching him up for him to improve and, and see where this thing goes. There you go. All right. So that'll finish off this round of, those were good questions, Adam. I, I'm yeah. really impressed with, uh, the depth and breadth of questions that we're getting about the Eagles from our listeners. And it was good, as you mentioned, to, to kind of see a new – sometimes we we see some of the same names, but I don't remember taking questions from Ramon and Billy, no, and Billy Grant before. So uh, no. we're growing. So we're happy to have the new listeners reaching out to us. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Check out the newsletter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. We also answered in the newsletter. And then yes. finally, uh, mm-hmm. we, we've got uh, some information on Andy Waddle we probably want to discuss. Yeah, so let's talk about, about Andy White on his future because I know we've done a lot of work on this and have some shared intel. Um, so let's remind people, last week the Steelers conducted uh, a lot of second – their final interviews for the GM jobs. Uh, they had an interview with Andy Weidel, which we discussed. That was Wednesday. Second interviews, right, second interviews correct. Uh, they had an interview with their in-house guy, Omar Khan, whose title is escaping me right now. But I kind of call him like the Howie Roseman of the Steelers, except he's not – he doesn't have the total say, but he's got cap. He's got Phil. I mean, he's he's um, an administrator, a high-ranking administrator for them. Uh, he's vice president of, I think, football operations for them, I believe is his title. Uh, and then they interviewed last uh, was Brandon Hunt, who has obviously interviewed with the Eagles too, but nothing has happened since then. So, Adam, last we told people last week that a big part of this interview process was the part of – Mike Tomlin's involvement when well, what we understood that in order for to get this job, I mean, you really have to be Mike Tomlin has to be your ally. He has a very large presence in this decision along with the Rooney's, uh, the Rooney family who owns the Steelers, but Mike Tomlin's been there for a long time. He's earned that right. He's been a great coach. And so he's been a big part of this process. Now we were told going into that, there wasn't really much of a relationship between Tomlin and Andy. So Andy was really going to getting to know, Mike Tomlin for the real, real know him uh, for the first time in this interview. Uh, as it was told to us, the interview went pretty well. Uh, Andy Weidel came out of this interview thinking that it was good. He had good chemistry uh, with the people that he met there. Um, things were going well. This is what we heard from people who know. And um, that and then one, that he actually spent quite a while talking to Mike Tomlin and, and was able to establish a good connection there, which is really central to, to trying to get that job. Now, I personally, this is me now not reporting anything, but speculating. Knowing that franchise, I still think they're an in-house type of organization, right? Mm -hmm. And Omar Khan's been there a long time, and he's like number two to Colbert or three. I don't know how how you want to put it. He's a very high-ranking guy, so I'm sure he's going to get real consideration for that job. Yeah, he's a vice president of football and business administration. He does their contracts, but he's – Omar has been – with him a long time, he's moved up. He got the VP role some years ago. Yeah, and but by yeah. Art, the, the person who will make the decision is, is Art Rooney II, who's the team Art president. Art Rooney too. He, yep. he'll, he'll make the decision with input from everybody. But you make a really good point from we've heard from various sources. Mike Talman's got a lot of input. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's worked with Omar Va- obviously for for many years. Uh, so it, it, it in uh, Weidel started his career uh, with Steelers, as we know. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, and John Spitek, former Eagles executive, had his, and uh, Ryan Calden, who's a 
who's the personnel director for the Titans had his. So it's they've got a good group of people interviewing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am I imagine the Steelers are now going to do their, you know, diligence on on the Roonies, uh, like you said, Art Rooney too, and Mike Tomlin are gonna kind of meet and make a decision pretty soon. So we'll see what happens. Uh one thing we heard was that that Andy and Omar know each other. So it'll be interesting to see it, whatever happens, you know, just because they interview all these guys doesn't mean one person has to get a job. Maybe there's room to get more than one person you like. So we'll we'll see. I mean, I, if Andy really hit it off with Mike Tomlin, you know, it sounds like there's a good chance he might get a job there with the Steelers. So we'll just have to see how they kind of work their hierarchy and restructure their front office now that Kevin Colbert is gone. Yeah, so – uh, yeah, I have no idea how uh, we, what we had heard a couple weeks ago is that uh, after Andy's first interview that some they know each other somehow. I have no idea of how well, but it's not right. like they're completely like strangers or something, right? Uh, but the big key here, we also heard, we we also heard you you, you mentioned uh, that if Andy Andy's he's had his two interviews as, uh, uh, for the GM spot, uh, there's some people around the league uh, that we talked to over the last week or so that said that. Don't dismiss the possibility because he's so well thought of in the Eagles building, excuse me, the Steelers building, obviously in the Eagles mm-hmm. building as well, that um, he could be paired up as assistant GM with Omar if Omar gets the GM job because sure. Omar's background is not personnel like Andy's or someone else would be assistant GM. Mm. So and, and if it's not Andy, maybe they pair him up with someone who really has got a good personnel background. But what helps Andy, he's from Pittsburgh and he knows that organization – so yep. good luck to him. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we will see what happens. Now, if he do- winds up getting a job with the Steelers, Adam, it just becomes another hole, sort of, that that Howie's got to fill here. I mean, it's just another lost front office guy and um, more restructuring to the Eagles front office, which is, uh, I think we said this a couple of times. I mean, the Eagles are finally coming off some stability with their drafts. Most people think that their last two drafts have not just yeah. been good for the players, but good by the process for the most part. And um now, you know, when they finally make their announcements of front office, what the front office looks like, there's going to be a lot of new names. We've, we've discussed many of them, many of them, and there'll probably be some more. Yeah, they're actually – I was counting – maybe the next show we'll do a front office update. We'll just go over the whole thing. There could be, with all the departures and promotions, there could be like 12 to 14 changes. <laughs> um, college and pro, you know, together. But can, remember, they're going to be anywhere from four to six promotions. You had – now, this is the whole entire offseason I'm talking about. You had both you had two personnel directors leave to become assistant GMs. You had uh, some contracts were not renewed. Some got, contracts were terminated. There's been a lot of departures here. It is weird. We've had a bunch of questions about this, what our opinion is. Mm-hmm. Why is this all happening? It's a tough, it's a tough call, I, especially when you win. When They've had tremendous success. Really, Super Bowl year, they, they had one down a year. They, they, and they, uh, they still made the playoffs last year. So the roster is much better this year. And, you, uh, and when you look at it now, this is one of the best rosters they've had in years. So why are so many people leaving? I don't have quite an answer yet, but it, they're going for a restructuring, restructuring in both the pro and college departments. Now, I know they like rewarding people who've been there for a while, who they really like. I get that part of it. But why are some people not being renewed? That that question I'd like to know, but we just don't know yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I tell you you look at it and this is not a criticism because some of these, some people who are leaving are either getting better jobs. I mean, how he was going to have to fill holes anyway, but it is a, a caution that when you're just finding your identity and then you have to switch it, it's, it's tough. Like one of the things I've always admired about the Steelers, ironically, and the Ravens, um, I want to think there's another organization that stands out to me for this, but I can't think of it oh. right now. Yeah, they, it's just that, yeah, of course they lose people. Everybody loses, and of course they have to replace, but they always seem to have a pipeline of in-house people that they're promoting and filling. And, of course, then they'll have to fill some spots without with, with external candidates, but then they'll learn the way and move up, right? It's a natural flow of succession there. And what it has done for those two franchises is that it's, um, it allowed them to maintain their same identity year after year, what they look for in a player, who they are, how they identify the franchise, right, without that ever changing. But the Eagles have never really had that kind of stability and continuity, and sometimes they, you know, have to just sort of change. Um, and that comes with – the so, like, again, the Steelers have been able to go from 
what, three head coaches in the last 30 years? That may not be exactly the same, but the identity is there. Um, the Eagles, not so much. They've had more turnover change. So I mean, it's just, it's, like I said, it's just caution. When you have that much turnover change and you don't have an identity of exactly who you are that's that stands the test of time, it's not, it's not always easy. You we'll, go through we'll, peaks and valleys. We'll get through that. We'll go over when we do another front office show. What you just said is really important. What's going to change? There's a philosophy change. Is whatever is with all these changes? Is there a new identity? Well, they've they've had these back to back back at least on paper, very good drafts. Right. Is there worry when you have so much change? We'll definitely get into that. It's very fair. It's it's there's no question. It's fair. Right. Because there's been so much change, but the roster looks good. But you were talking about stability. Baltimore mm-hmm. has stability. Eric DeCosta had been with them for two decades. He replaced right. the great Alfie Newsom, who's in the Hall of Fame. Right. Uh, Pittsburgh, Baltimore. Green Bay teams. was known for it as well. That Green was the team I said. Yeah. yeah, the Packers. Gutekust, Gu- yep. who, um, who's their GM, had been with, with, with the team forever, mm-hmm. you know, more than a decade, and he got the bump to, uh, to replace uh, the late, great uh, Ted Thompson. Who replaced so, the late, great Ron Wolf? if I'm not mistaken. You no, know, he's not late. Ron Wolf's alive. Well, I'm sorry. You're right. Not late. Yes, the, yes. the great Ron Wolf. Yes, yes. <laughs> sorry. His son Elliot, by the way, his son Elliot is with the Patriots. Doing right. Contracts and all the personnel. Right. Uh, and Mike Rowe's brother, Mac Rowe, is uh, their personnel director. How about that? There you go. There. Yeah. The Chiefs, since Andy has gotten there, they've done a great job of having continuity in their front office and the same people. And if they lose people, they move yeah. people up. I mean, they've they've been really solid in that area, too. Mike Bradway, Brad Feach. Right. Yeah. Uh, Mike Borgonzi has been there Borgonzi, for a little right? bit, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So you make, you make a good point. Stability is key. Because you do wonder down the line, there's nothing wrong with getting younger. Mm-hmm. But when you get so young, are they or do they have enough experience to know what they're what they're looking at, what they're gathering? You know, there's just because you lose Tom Donahoe, right? Right. Well, that's a big one as a as a mentor to the scouts and the front office of the Roseman, because how he brought him in. Now he's he's not there anymore. Mm-hmm. So they're just. I, I'm I'm curious to see what this thing looks like down the line, but that's for another show. That is for another show. This has been a great show. Thanks for the questions. Uh, fun going through everything from the front office to the personnel to the season, and we'll be back Thursday morning. And in between Q and A, will drop Wednesday morning. So make sure you're looking. For that as well. And of course, we'll always have some more announcements uh, coming up soon on future ITB stuff. So I want to thank everybody for listening to the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. I want to thank our producer, Hunter Brody. Check him out on YouTube. His channel is called Sports Talk with Broads. His website is broadsmedia.com. And as always, we thank you for flying with us inside the bird.